Hey everybody, it's Alex at Motoroso.com. In this video, we are going to be doing a step-by-step -step how to installation guide for the new Go Rhino E1 power running boards for the 21 and up 6th gen Ford Bronco. We made a separate product spotlight video about these steps where we go into a lot of detail about the features and functionality and we compare them to their main competitor, the Amp Research Power Step. And frankly, after having my hands on these things, they are less expensive, they feel stronger and more robust, and the installation was very straightforward, pretty comparable to the Amp Research plug and play, uh, which frankly aren't so plug and play on those Amp Research because you got to do the little posi tap wire thing and it is really tricky. Setting up the door magnets on this is not complicated and I don't see any issue uh, with them at all. So we're very excited to bring you this video. As usual, we'll put links to these products in the description of the video. Please support the work that we do here by shopping with us. Those links are going to take you over to Motoroso.com, where you can also reach us on live chat or call us anytime at 833-MOTOROSO. Now let's get into this install. Like any project, before installing the Go Rhino Electric running boards, we recommend laying everything out and check all of the parts to make sure you have everything you need to complete the project. Sometimes parts do get left out. It does happen. Make sure you don't get halfway through the project before you find out. Identify the driver's side motors and prepare the corresponding hardware. Each arm is etched to call out what position it's installed in, like rear right, for example. Install the front driver side motor assembly with the provided 25mm long bolts, lock washers, and flat washers. Note that the front bolt is a slightly smaller M8 and the rear bolt is an M10. Don't fully tighten these yet. Place and install the rear driver side motor assembly with the provided bolts and washers. Note this time you're using two 25mm M10 bolts. Repeat this motor installation process on the other side of your Bronco. Next, grab four of the longer 35mm M10 bolts and the corresponding washers and install into the upper mounting holes on all four motor assemblies. Grab your control module assembly and the two 25mm M10 bolts and washers and install this onto the threaded holes near the center of the underside of the cab on the driver side of the vehicle. Next, grab your wiring harness and starting from the control module, connect all four connectors to the control module. Align the arrows on the small round connectors and connect black to black and red to red. Route the corresponding connectors for the front left and rear left motor connectors to each motor and connect them. And using zip ties along the way to make sure the harness stays put. Now we're going to pass the passenger side of the harness up and over the vehicle's frame, exhaust, and the drive shaft. Once over the drive shaft, we'll need to route the harness over the fuel tank. Pass the line over the frame and the fuel tank from the passenger side. Then run the rear right and front connectors to their corresponding motors. And zip tie it securely well away from anything rotating, sharp, or hot. Next, we need to install the LED lights. First, clean your chosen mounting surface with some rubbing alcohol to make sure the adhesive will bond securely. Peel back the 3M tape from the LEDs and press them firmly to mount. We chose to mount them slightly inside each motor assembly. Align the arrows on the small round connectors and press firmly, then zip tie the loose wiring to the harness. Repeat this installation process for the remaining three lights. Over in the engine bay, insert the line feed down the driver's side firewall and along the rear of the wheel well. Make sure to avoid anything hot, sharp, or rotating. The power section of the harness has red and black wires with fuse holders. Route this section of the wire harness from the controller along the driver's side frame rail of the vehicle. Connect the wiring harness to the line feed at the wheel well and carefully pull it up through the engine bay. Find a clean path to route your wiring, and like before, go back through and zip tie everything up and out of the way. Before connecting to the battery, remove the fuse from the red positive wire on the harness. Choose a mounting location and remove the positive battery terminal nut and connect the positive wire. Remove the negative battery terminal nut and connect the negative wire. In the driver's side footwell, remove the floor mat followed by the door sill panel by pulling up firmly to release the clips. Move the driver's seat forward. 
Then if you have the four door, remove any floor mats in the rear as well as the rear door sill panel. Next, remove the B-pillar trim. Again, pulling out firmly or sliding your hands inside the trim and pressing outward for that last clip. On the driver's side rear, carefully pull up the carpet to reveal the drain grommet. Remove this grommet by prying it out or pressing up from below. Now in Go Rhino's instructions, they tell you to feed the harness through this giant hole as shown and fill the remaining void with a bunch of silicone. We don't like that. So instead, we opted to modify this grommet by removing the filters and the rubber valve and then clipping out the cross section in the center. This hole happens to be the perfect size for the harness shielding. We can now feed the harness through the modified grommet and have a much cleaner, snugger fit. Pull the harness fully through the grommet till it's taut and reinstall the grommet. Now this is probably 99% weatherproof, but for a better seal we even applied a little bit of silicone around the top of the grommet. Next, we'll need to remove the passenger side floor mat and trim to pass the white sensor wire across the vehicle. This is probably the toughest part of the installation. Carefully but firmly, pull up the carpet, starting from the edge all the way to the middle and over the driveline hump. Next, insert the line feed from the passenger side, placing it over the driveline hump. Back on the driver's side, feed the white sensor wire under the carpet and connect it to the line feed. This is tricky to do by feel, but you'll get it. Now carefully pull the line feed out from the passenger side. Be sure to stop if you feel the line feed catch on anything, then reach in, free it up, and keep pulling slowly. Next, we'll need to clean the mounting surfaces for the door sensors and the magnets. Now grab one of your magnet sensor harnesses. For a four-door, these will have two sensors per harness and only one for a two-door Bronco. On the driver's side B-pillar, loosen the 8mm bolt behind the seat belt and slide the ground connector under the bolt, then retighten. Make sure to get a good connection here. Ground faults are the most common issue with the magnet sensors not functioning properly. Connect the snap-in bullet connector. We have a four-door here, so we'll route one of the door sensors towards the front of the B-pillar and the other to the rear of the B-pillar. Install the driver's side front door sensor directly below the VIN sticker, about 6 inches from the latch. Install the driver's side rear door sensor to the bottom of the hinge as shown. Measure the distance from the center line of the latch to the middle of the sensor. Then on the driver's side door, measure from the center of the latch down and mark for magnet placement. Repeat the sensor installation process on the passenger side. Connect the ground wire to the seatbelt assembly, connect the snap-in bullet connector, and orient your sensors. Install the passenger side rear door sensor on the bottom of the hinge. Then on the passenger side front door, measure 6 inches down from the center of the latch, make a mark, and install the sensor. On the passenger side front door, measure 6 inches down from the latch, and mark for magnet placement. To make sure all magnets and sensors are aligned, we first used masking tape to hold the magnets in place over the marks that we made in our previous steps. Plug in your override switch to complete the circuit and close all your doors. Now reinsert the fuse on the positive battery lead. With all the doors closed, if any of the door sensors and magnets are misaligned, the arms will deploy because they think the doors are open and you'll need to play with magnet placement until you get it right and the arms are tracked with the doors closed. And of course, when everything is aligned properly, the arms will deploy when any door is open on driver or passenger side respectively. This can take a little patience, but when you get it right, make a mark to identify the proper magnet placement, then remove the 3M backing tape and permanently install the four magnets. Next, open one of the doors so the arms deploy. You can now mount the steps by aligning the sliding T-nuts with the slots in the arms. When it's placed properly, the step will sit here on its own in this groove. Align the front of the step to the back of the front wheel well. You can gently tap on the step on its ends to slide on the arms. Once in place, secure the steps using the provided M6 socket cap screws and torque to 9 foot-pounds. With our steps secured, fully tighten the mounting hardware on the arms to 18 foot-pounds.
Repeat the step installation process and arm fasteners on the passenger side. Next, decide where you want to mount your override switch. You can mount it on the dash, the seat, or on the B-pillar. This customer wanted on the B-pillar trim out of the way. Tuck away any excess wiring and reinstall all the interior trim pieces. And with that, you're done with your installation. Okay, we're going to put a link to purchase the four-door version of these steps right here. That's going to take you over to Motoroso.com, where you can reach us on live chat or call us anytime toll-free at 833-MOTOROSO. Please support the work we're doing here by shopping with us. We really appreciate it. Now, if you'd like to learn more about suspension options and you put these steps on in preparation for lifting your Bronco, check out this video right over here where we talk about all the suspension options for the sixth-generation Ford Bronco that we found at SEMA in 2022. And subscribe to the channel for all of our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.